want to shut down my uh, our phone first because uh, our techni technical team suggests me to do so. But I think it's a kind of censorship. <laughs> I want to I want to do twittering all the time, you know, to try to um, break the limits of uh, individual capabilities uh, uh, to try to connect with the world all the time. And this is kind of my experiments, you know, uh, in the past uh, roughly seven years because I missed the opportunity to, uh, to um, match the birth of internet. I, I, I'm, I'm younger than internet. And uh, uh, I missed the second wave as well because I was uh, a middle school student. So I don't know what web was invented at that moment. But I didn't miss the third wave of Web 2.0 because uh, I started my blog seven years ago, it, which was regarded as the first blog in China. And my first sentence in my, um, my first post in my blog is, um, is just like an advocacy statement. Uh, I said that, um, I, yeah, this is the first day I become a blogger and I wish millions of Chinese people become blogger in the future. So after seven years, you know, we see 40 million bloggers in that country. Yeah, it's, it, it's also become true. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of uh, amazing things happening on the internet or, or already happened. That's the, that's the very important part of uh, uh, the, 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 the key things of the internet. Nobody can predict what could happen uh, in the future. Yeah, that's, the, that's from the that's the, 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 the facts from the first day on. And nobody can predict how internet were, were well used or misused you know, um, uh, in our world and how internet could be reinvented all the time. Uh, and, but, but there's still a lot of things, you know. Uh, uh, I, I have to say that, you know, uh, in China, you know, the, 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 the fast moving uh, and development of the internet uh, confused me a lot about the philosophy of internet, whether internet could, can be controlled or, or, or anybody can really uh, um, uh, take over internet or, or who is there, you know, trying to give China an, a chance that to reinvent the internet there. Uh, so that's the development of China internet and um, uh, I'm not sure if the PowerPoint, excuse me. That triggered my thinking about the philosophy of the internet uh, in different countries because I um, intensively involved in the uh, development of China internet, Web 2.0, uh, um, um, this industry and a lot of uh, uh, um, grassroots uh, movements, which I'm now calling cloud activism. It's a kind of uh, activism uh, power that came from grassroots, but not isolated uh, to each other. They connect to each other and uh, 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 build up a, a, a superpower to try to change the political landscape in one country as well around the world. In China, the same thing, you know, that it showcases uh, some kind of uh, uh, um, different stuffs in the past seven years. And uh, uh, based on the development of China internet, uh, many people are trying to um, um, think about how censorship work together with the grassroots power, or how the grass po grassroots power are changing and the, 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 the internet development in that country. So um, back, sorry, the PowerPoint has some problem. I have to uh, uh, only use the vocal. Uh, um, in the past 40 years in China, you know, uh, it changed a lot. In back to 1969, we have uh, uh, we have um, Chinese um, uh, uh, Cultural Revolution that moment, uh, and almost all the Chinese people, including the whole family. They only worship one person, the Chairman Mao. You know, so all the people use the right bubble. You know, to, 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 uh, as their daily life. You know, uh, um, uh, uh, disciplines and rules. 
So all the people there, they have only one thinking model. They follow the, the rules from the Chairman Mao from the Communist Party. Uh, and uh, to 1979, something changed because of the, because the country cannot take the burden of uh, uh, so many uh, problems in the economy. So Deng Xiaoping you know, changed that country by uh, opening that country and taking reforms into that country. And uh, in that year, the, there is a very significant uh, uh, political uh, uh, case uh, in Beijing, you know, we call democracy war. And one guy uh, studied, called Wei Jingsheng, he studied to post many uh, uh, democracy uh, uh, posters in Xidan streets. There is a war that uh, uh, get a lot of people's attention. And uh, in 1989, everyone here knows that the Tiananmen case, you know, happened. That's the year of web as well, right? And uh, we see that the Chinese government and the Chinese culture still has a, has a very big, you know, um, uh, legacy of controlling how to control something in, that, in the whole country, how to control people's thinking model. And after 1989, we see the booming of China economy, and China becomes the biggest manufacturing power in the world. And almost everything we see today, including food, toys, and a lot of electronic devices, came from China uh, uh, factories. And uh, we see the booming of the internet in that country as well. And uh, the internet users now become the largest population around the world. So you cannot say that on the internet, you cannot tell who is a Chinese. You can tell who is, who is not a dog, you know but you cannot tell who is China. So it's, it's, uh, it's a significant de development there. But at the same time, the government still trying to control the internet based on their uh, legacy of controlling philosophy. They want to control the internet. They want to unify the internet into the Chinese way. It's, a, it's just like the same thing you know, happened 2,000 years ago, like Qin Shi Huangdi, you know, try to unify the whole country of China. So the censorship is becoming the biggest censorship uh, uh, around the world. They invest about billions of dollars in, into the infrastructure to filter content. They invest a lot of uh, money to employ those internet monitoring uh, systems and uh, with a lot of uh, personnel deployed. Uh, at the same time, uh, they, they have a lot of uh, people uh, employed to uh, create some noises online. We call it 50 cents party. That's a very interesting uh, phenomenon in China uh, because uh, they, they not only uh, uh, try to filter the content people created and shared, uh, but also there are a lot of uh, uh, noises created by the, by the people they, 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 they uh, hired. So it's a kind of censorship 2.0 uh, model you know, in China. We have uh, 300 million internet users th there. At the same time, we have a lot of uh, 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 noises and uh, less value information there. So you can see a lot of copycats of internet businesses in China uh, to the same counterparts in Western world, like YouTube, like Flickr, like uh, uh, blogging stuffs. But the real usage of internet is still somewhat very limited. People only use it, those instant messengers, and uh, they are only they are still the only users. Not all the people are think differently, uh, think independently, uh, uh, and uh, post something uh, from their inner heart. Instead, they, they, they only follow a lot of content copied from other where, uh, uh, including uh, uh, hundreds of uh, movie titles and music titles. You know, uh, were translated to China. Uh, 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 every day. So you can see that on, on China internet, there are a lot of c content, you know, copied from uh, every, er, elsewhere instead of creating by themselves. But at the same time, we see the growing power of grassroots, you know, there are independent voices. We see the growing number of bloggers. You, you, as as an, I mentioned, that 40 million bloggers emerged in that country, but it's not enough. We, we still trying to get the tipping point of, uh, of uh, the, the future you know, uh, scenario to, 
to see how those grassroots are trying to change the, 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 the um, uh, controlling model of the, that country. For example, you know, in China, we have a lot of people, internet users, they are trying to share their real ideas online. They're trying to create different kinds of uh, media formats to share and connect with the world, which I call shareism. It's a kind of philosophy that people were rewarded by their sharing. And uh, they, were in, they encouraged each other to share content and transfer content to a larger community and generate you know, a, a large wave of uh, internet uh, awareness. This kind of uh, power you know, came from those grassroots and challenged the censorship system. It's, uh, in China, the, the metaphor are, are very uh, uh, interesting. And the internet itself, in, from the government view, it's like uh, trying to unify and make the internet harmonious. So they call it harmonious internet. But people, you know, use different ways to describe it. They call it harmonious river crab because the, the same pro similar pronunciation, harmonious uh, river crab, you know, they, 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 they're, they're, they pronounce similar. So, so people use river crab as a metaphor to describe the censorship system. To the grassroots, they, they don't like the real crab, absolutely. They don't like that their website and blogs were harmonized. So they create another mat, a figure called re, Grass Mount House. It's a, it's a figure very interesting and popularized online uh, for a long time since this year because uh, just uh, uh, this, you know, there are a lot of anniversaries this year. Uh, um, uh, and people started to realize that censorship system is becoming more and more serious. And, and the government blocked Twitter, blocked Facebook, blocked YouTube, and almost all other popular social network working services and web 2.0 stuff, uh, uh, stuffs. So this kind of censorship generate people's you know, uh, uh, revenge and fighting and confrontation to the government. So this kind of uh, uh, fighting becomes uh, two figures fighting. The river crab as, uh, uh, vs. the grass mud horse is a kind of, uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, it's a kind of uh, like a legend story. Yeah. And people create a lot of videos, animations, cutting, cutting works to try to uh, 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 fight with the censorship system. So they use different words, slangs and new, new terms, try to describe the internet in their own ways, try to uh, uh, transfer their own information. They use different tools to try to break the censorship system. Mm -hmm. So just last month, we saw that the, 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 the fast uh, uh, using of uh, uh, Tor network, you know, Tor is, uh, is, uh, is a tool for anonymity, access of internet, uh, initialized uh, 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 from the uh, project uh, supported by Defense uh, Department of Defense here, and uh, literally uh, uh, supported by EFF. And Tor is uh, supposed to, supposed to be an anonymity accessing tool before, but in China it has very different use. People there use uh, Tor to to build a tunnel to get across the censorship system because it's, um, almost every popular social networking website was blocked there, and people want to uh, break that system. So they use Tor a lot, and we see about 700, 7,000 uh, percentage of increasing of Tor usage just last month because it's the 60th anniversary of China a Communist Party took regime. And the government doesn't like people to buzz online about anything about this case. They just want to direct by themselves just the Olympic Games, you know. So it's the, it's, the, it's the different agenda. The people has their own agenda. They want to express freely. And the government doesn't like too much. And they want to have something, you know, uh, 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 totally under control. But they use all kinds of methods already. They blocked different websites. They, they interfered the SSL access recently. They tried to frame Google 
Dubcock, Google, uh, the company, you know, to try to tell people that internet is very dangerous stuff, you know, so people should try to follow the, 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 the rule, you know, the government defined. But the internet users, they don't like this kind of saying. They just want to create their own agenda. So in China, we have a lot of uh, uh, internet creations in the past seven years. We see so many internet uh, 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 users, they are trying to connect with the world in their own ways. So they build tunnels, they cr create a lot of uh, different uh, uh, connections, all as, blog, uh, as bridge bloggers to uh, uh, create you know, the cultural exchanges between each other. So this kind of uh, different uh, uh, agenda gives China a chance uh, to showcase the world you know, whether uh, there is um, a different internet universe in, 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 this, uh, um, in this world, or how can we create a different uh, internet uh, uh, and social norm in different countries. In China, the same case uh, uh, happens everywhere because the internet businesses create a lot of uh, opportunities there. We have uh, 300 million internet users, but at the same time, you know, we cannot predict how long the censorship can be really, you know, uh, 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 disrupt, disrupted uh, there. And we don't know how many people could uh, become really free thinking there. Uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, internet successful businesses in China like Baidu. You know, it's the first, uh, the top search engine in China uh, surpassed Google uh, about three years ago. So Google is, so China is the only place for, for Google didn't have the leadership there. You know, we see such kind of differences, but many people don't know how these kind of things happen there. So two years ago, I wrote an open letter to Google founders to suggest them they, they should try to keep their consistent principles in China instead of compromise too much. Because if they compromise, the, the more they compromise, the more they don't know, they, they, they don't know where to go. The, the, the thing happened this year because the government, you know, they framed Google, the company, as a malicious content provider in China. They use any propaganda machine to, to frame that. And that's pushed Google to a, another corner, you know. They don't know where to go now. So the Google president in China, they, he has to step down. And nobody knows how this can sustain, you know, as an international business. So this kind of uh, things uh, generate a lot of grassroots buzz as well, because after the open letter to Google, many internet users in China, they've also criticized Google a lot about the, their compromise. Because Google.cn, you know, the, 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 the server in China, you know, they, filtered a lot of content uh, uh, about some sensitive uh, human name, people's name, and some sensitive uh, uh, accidents and incidents in, in, in China, like Tiananmen. You know, so this kind of, uh, I think this kind of uh, 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 compromise also generates the, the loyalty losing of Google. So it gives us a lot of questions, how internet can really have uh, you know, future in China. And that's the challenge from the grassroots as well. And we are still seeking the ways, you know, to see how the country can develop its own internet and can fit and connect with the whole world. So give me the question and I will try to, you know, answer you all the time. Thank you.